properties of logs and how to apply those to expand expressions. And just for our reference, I have our list of properties of logs. All right? The main thing you should remember is that addition of logs with the same base goes hand in hand with multiplication. Subtraction of logs with the same base goes hand in hand with division. And the main other thing is if I have the log of something raised to a power, I can take that power and stick it out front. Okay, that's the fourth property. So now let's apply these properties to solving um, some problems, or actually the instructions are to expand. All right, so I'm giving it like this, but it wants me to expand. And what I started off saying is multiplication goes hand in hand with addition. So instead of natural log of 4 times x, okay, based on this second property here, I can rewrite this as the natural log of 4 plus the natural log of x, okay? So that's what they mean by expand. These two are synonymous, all right? This is the same way. These are two different ways of writing the same thing, all right? As I said before, division goes hand in hand with subtraction. So if that, I had the log of 7 divided by x, I can then expand this to be the log of 7 minus the log okay, of x. Again, two different ways of writing the same thing. Number three, I have the log x squared. And in order to expand this, you need to look at the fourth property, which says if I have an exponent, I can just simply take it and stick it out front. Okay, so the log of x squared I can rewrite as 2 log all right, x. So let's move on to some harder problems. And while I'm doing that, I just want to explain that these properties are going to be critical when we go to, it, go to solving logs and exponentials. So in the future, these rules will, will come in handy. All right, so here I've got the natural log of kx cubed over 5. All right, so you just want to take it in pieces. And our instructions are, again, to expand this. The first thing I want to look at is getting rid of this division sign. That's pretty much going to be your first step. All right, so you want to get rid of the division. So remember, division goes hand in hand with subtraction. So I can rewrite this, the natural log of my numerator, which is kx cubed, minus the natural log of my denominator, which is 5. Okay? Now, I'm not quite done because, look, notice I've now got the natural log of a product, k times x cubed. So I can now further break this up into, okay, I'm multiplying. So now this goes hand in hand with addition. So I can break this up into the natural log of k plus the natural log of x cubed and then minus my natural log of 5. All right, can't really do anything else with that natural log of 5, so it's just going to come along. And now if I notice, I, there's one more thing I can do to expand this, and that is get rid of my exponent. Okay, so I have an x cubed here, so in order to get rid of that, I can just move it to the front. So my final expansion is the natural log of k plus, the nat plus 3 natural log of x minus the natural log of 5. And that would be my answer. Okay? Let's try another one. All right. So in my first step here, again, we just talked about this. I have a division, so I probably want to get rid of the division first. Remember, division goes hand in hand with subtraction. So this would be log base 2 of my numerator, which is 32, okay, minus my denominator, which is log base 2 of the whole denominator, okay, x, y squared, okay. All right. Notice this, log base 2 of 32. 2 to the what equals 32? This is actually just a number. So if I want to... Um, I can simply substitute for log base 2, 32 for a 5. Why? Because 2 to the 5th equals 32. Definition of a log. All right now I've got minus, but notice here I've got a product. Okay, so remember whenever I'm multiplying, I'm multiplying x times y squared. I can now break, expand this even further 
by using addition. But I have this negative out front. The negative out front needs to be applied to everything. So I'm going to put the expansion of this into parentheses and keep my negative out front. This will help me to follow my signs as I go through. So this is going to be log base 2. All right. Remember, multiplication goes hand in hand with addition. So log base 2 of x plus the log base 2 okay, of y squared. Okay. Now this is 5, and I've got my subtraction here. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone. And notice that there's one more final thing I can do here, and that is get rid of my exponent. Notice that that's pretty much going to be our last step. In the next problem, we'll see where it's going to be our first, but pretty much when it's just attached to one variable like y squared, or up in this case x cubed, that'll be your last step to move that up front. So I end up with 5 minus log base 2x, okay, and while I do this, I'm just going to distribute this negative, so it's going to go here, and it needs to go here, that's why I stuck it out front, minus log base 2 of y, and now I actually forgot it, I was going to move this out front, so I need a 2 in here, okay, so that's my final answer, 5 minus log base 2 of x, minus 2 log base 2y, that would be my final answer. So let's look at my last example I did here. I'm taking log of a radical, okay? Notice that everything is underneath this radical. And as we review radicals and exponents, recall that we can actually rewrite that as an exponent. So it's going to be log, okay, x over y squared over z, okay? And then I can raise that to the one-half power. So remember, when I have a radical, I can rewrite it as an exponent, which I've done here. And now, if our exponent applies to everything we're taking the log of, okay, what can I do? Well, based on that fourth property, I can just move it out front. So now this becomes one-half log of x, y squared over z. Okay? So now I need to just expand this and this is very analogous to what we did in our fourth problem, but we have to keep our one and a half out front. It's going to come with us the entire time. So just like I did that negative sign, I'm going to stick it out front. All right? And now I'm going to expand this. Remember we got rid of our division first, so division goes hand in hand with subtraction. So it's the log of my numerator, which is x y squared minus the log of my denominator, which is just z, okay, All right. and now I'm going to go to my next step because notice I have here a product, multiplication goes hand in hand with addition, so I've got my one half, alright, log of x, plus log y squared, okay, and now I still have my minus log z, okay, continuing on, all right, there's two more things I can do. The first thing I need to do is get rid of this exponent, and the way I do that is just by sticking it out front, okay, so this is going to become one half all right, log of x plus 2 log y minus log z. Okay, and now for my last step, just like we would if we had an algebraic expression, I can actually distribute this one half. But the one half needs to be distributed to every single term in parentheses, okay? So for my final answer, I'd have one half log z, I mean log x, sorry, all right? But notice when I say one half times two, all right, they would cancel, and I'd just be left in this middle term with log y, all right? And then my last term would be one half times minus log z, or one half 
minus one half log z. All right, the key to all these problems is just take them in pieces, okay? And make sure that you get them reduced down as far as you can. For example, if we look here at four, you might stop right here, but get rid of your exponents, get rid of your multiplication, get rid of your division. All right, so I hope that helps you apply properties of logs to expanding expressions.